Welcome to episode two, or session two, of the Kaleidoscope Maker. I'm going to show you how to make a fixture, or a jig, that lets you adjust the mirror angles for your mirrors inside your kaleidoscope. Now this can be used either with regular mirror or first surface mirror, but many people have been asking for some kind of device where you can set up your mirror angle and have it look and work correctly and then do a whole series of, of mirror systems or uh, do different angles with the same type of mirror. This is one of the basic designs I have and there will be more in the future. And I may come back and visit this again with new ideas on how to make this much more flexible and enjoyable. So hang on here and we'll show you how to make it. I've uh, cut a series of uh, pieces of wood. This is uh, one and a half by 11 and a half inches long. And one and a half by 11 inches long. And I'm using something that's about half an inch thick. Excuse me, three eighths inch thick. Uh, you can have thinner material, you can have thicker material, you can have wider, longer, shorter. But this basic concept uh, is to give you the idea of how you can make the jig. Then you can adjust it for the type of work that you're doing. I'll try to include some plans or location of plans for this of what I'm making. But this is to give you an idea of the fixture, how to use it, but then you can make it to fit your particular needs. Um, what I've done is I've cut six pieces right here, one, two, three, four, five, six. I just used any old kind of scrap wood I have. And then I marked about three quarters or one third of the way down. And this is where I'm going to be putting in a piece of rod to make a hinge, which you'll see in a little bit. I'm going to be drilling here the holes to put the uh, rod in. It's the, the hole I'm drilling is just slightly bigger than this so I can glue one end of this in. But you'll see how it's done and what it's about. So hold on here and we'll get started. I'll need to adjust this to where it'll go all the way through my wood. So I want to bring this up as high as I can, just to where I almost touch it. And then I have these lines to where I can uh, run it pretty well flat. And this, this clamp works well to hold it for me and allow me to center it pretty well. I'm going to drill the hole in this one and in all of these, all the way through the, the width of it. In other words, this is this width and this is the thickness. We're going to go through here so it lines up. So hold on. I'm going to be sure to clamp a hole this thing down. And there's a hole. Now, I didn't happen to have some rod handy that I enjoyed or liked, so I'm using some old steel launch rod that I use for model rockets. But as you see, it fits in the hole nicely, and that's just about the way I want it. A little bit of place fine, uh, allows it to spin and flex, which is all right. <clears throat> so now I need to drill the holes the remaining five pieces, so I shall do that. Now with the holes drilled in all these pieces, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand off the rough edges that were created by this process on all the pieces. Again, you can make this out of almost any type of wood you want. I guess hardwoods are a little bit better than others. Softer woods may be able to be used easily, but they may have a tendency to uh, wear out quicker. And then again, this rod is going to go through all the pieces. Thank you. 
and I'm not going to glue or cut it just yet, but as you see, that allows these pieces to be able to turn individually, which I'll show you why in a little bit. So our next step now is to glue every other one together on one end, and then glue the others together on the other end, and that allows to create a, a, a V-shape that will turn, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Now since we've got our pieces cut, now I've got the pieces cut that I'll be using for the top edge and the bottom edge, which we'll show you in a little bit. I do want to space these things out so that there is flexibility in here, so that the pieces can turn in between each other. So I just stick it between one or between two and two, but just so that I keep a gap between two pieces. Hopefully a playing card will be big enough. generally where they're tight together I'll do that and then I'll do it at the other end in the same gap and that gives me a little bit of room and then I'm going to use a clamp and I'm going to squeeze them together but not really hard I just want to hold them is all I want to do just hold them together <clears throat> and then I can measure my pieces for the ends and then cut them and in this case I will use this and mark kind of the edge and then go cut pieces to the front and back and I'll show you how to glue this in a little bit okay everything's still clamped up again not tight just just enough to hold them in place and I have my rod through in order to make my hinge next what I'm going to do is I cut these pieces to width match inside here. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. <clears throat> Zoom in a bit here for you. Alright. And now what I want to do is I really want to pay attention to what I'm doing now. In this case I'm going to glue to this one, this one, and this one. I'm skipping every other one. And to make sure that I'm doing it right at the other end, I'll just mark those. Not the first one because that's this one but this one, this one, and this one are the ones I want to glue down here. I'm going to do one at a time. And then I also want to make sure I don't get any glue between these things to hold them together. So I'm going to be careful when I do my gluing. And I don't want any of it to spill out. This one I probably have too much glue on, so I should take some of it off. And then what I'll do is I'll put my piece on, and I will weight it down. At this point in time, I, yeah, I can leave those cards in there. I'm using a 2x4 and a heavy weight. I'm going to let that dry and then again make sure that I don't have all these boards glued. Just the three need to be connected together. The other three need to not be connected and you'll understand why in a little bit. So I'm going to let this dry and I'll be back with you. Apologize for the sound. The uh, next way to do this for these, since this end is dried, would be to go ahead and add some glue. And you can do it the same way that you did the other side. But if you happen to have some of these these type of clamps, they work out really nice for this end or for whatever. 
what you do is you spread your glue <coughs> add your piece and then what we do is we can actually bring it out here and we can clamp it right there hopefully you're seeing that on there they clamped it right there and then what we do is come here and clamp this and typically I'd get another clamp of the same type and clamp it right here I can't find them right now so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and clamp it like this okay and as you can see this is the general idea of it see how it actually separates like this so what we plan to do with it is make it so that it creates a V-shape at the appropriate angle. Next step will be to actually place some on the other side, right here, so it holds those together at that end, same on the other. Again, we need to just let all this dry and finish up the gluing on the other side and then we're ready to do the next steps. Now I'll show you the next step. Uh, the since these have dried, I'm going to move the clamps now. Sorry. Um, removing the clamps, so I can show you basically what the idea is. As you see, I've got one side glued. Sorry about the cables. One side's glued, and one side is open. What I'm going to do is add another strip along these three to do like I have here and again along the bottom here to help hold those things together but they need to be on the opposite side of these strips and again you have to make sure you don't glue to the pieces that already have strips so the best thing for you to do is hold it like this and open it up and mark the pieces that you need to glue this one this one this one and then the opposite ones this one this one and this one and you go through the next step of gluing those and I will show you what the end result is after I've done that and now since we have all of the pieces dry and glued this is what turns out to be basically a simple board that will open up and allow you to adjust to almost any angle you want which is what we'll cover next part how to attach this to something and configure it for an appropriate angle so we will be right back the next step in this after finishing which I did not apply finish or whatever to this is to attach it to some kind of base on one side using some hinges now there is one thing you'll need to remember that when you assemble this is that the side that you hinge will actually end up I hope you can see right there where the the boards will hit against the base so what you could do is you could trim this thing off at a 45 degrees here so that when you hinge it it doesn't hit on the corner because I'm going to hinge here on the outside which you'll see but we can trim this off at 45 and then apply the hinge and that way when it opens and closes it won't hit here the other option is put it at about out about 45 degrees and actually raise it up a little bit um, in this case you'll see me do it do it in a simplified method first I want to stop this side from flopping out so I will just put a screw in here let me find my screwdriver that'll stop it all that, that all it needs to do is just stop it and uh, again I could make this board thicker to fit the area I'm working on 
and I just go ahead and put another screw in here about well actually what I can do right now yeah I put a screw out here on the outside edge I can find it just to stop it from opening too far these are temporary they're not permanent Again, I could raise this up maybe four of an inch, an eighth of an inch. But then I want to hinge it right down here. That actually is going to be not correct. So I'm going to have to find a bigger hinge. So I'll be right back. Um, since I was not able to find a uh, hinge. I could go buy one but I decided not to. I also like to show on these videos how to solve problems as I'm working through things. Um, I just decided to go ahead and use this hinge but I need to raise it up. Best way for me to do that is just get another piece of wood, remove my screw, I'm using to hold it Actually, I probably ought to glue it first. And also screw this one down just to hold it since my glue will not be dry. right now I could just go ahead and clamp it and then screw in my uh, screws need to change the batteries in this one.
It's always fun to watch somebody screwing screws, isn't it? There it goes. <coughs> it's always uh, helpful to also have the right tools and materials and supplies. Okay, now as you see, I can add the hinge here. Try to bring it into where you can see it. <coughs> I can add the hinge and uh, it'll fit now. <coughs> And I want to screw through enough board and material to hold this. I really should use smaller screws, which I have some short screws. I think they're shorter. Nope, those aren't. This one is. Pre drilling the hole is also very helpful, too. <laughs> Again, I love showing you my mistakes and problems. Because solving problems, like I said, is the best thing you can do in clay school. Now, I normally go ahead and add all the extra screws, finish it up, but I'd like to finish up this video. <clears throat> this will show you the concept. Now, what this does, I'm going to have to add the extra screws. <sighs> so, I'll be right back. Okay, finish screwing in. I haven't added all the screws, but I will. But here's the concept of this device, is now you have an adjustable mirror system. Now it lets you slide the pieces out until you get the angle you want. But that's part of the secret here. And I'll show you how to, to put the mirrors in and what you need to do to focus. And one thing I like to use to focus, I usually will cut some plastic and make some scratch marks in it, but also a playing card. playing card and usually I don't use these I usually use something like a jack or a king or a queen so I'll be back and I'll show you how to attach that and get this working so now that I'm back and I've got the hinge put on here right down there as you can see and this whole mechanism basically works like this it looks extend out about that far uh, it depends upon how you've cut this thing, if you modified or whatever, but that's what I've done. That's more than 90 degrees, which is what I'm hoping for. And now, what I need to do is have a target. Picked out the king clubs. Don't know why. I like queen, kings, queens, and aces to be used. And you just want to attach it down here. Let me show you on this side. Kind of like this. See that? I'm right closer to you. Kind of like that. And I'm going to use the thumbtacks for right now. I can create a different target to be used. Um, 
<clears throat> uh, cut a piece of plastic or something. The big problem is that when you close it, you see that's going to hit right there. That's all right. We can just move the card a little bit. So let me go ahead and tax this with thumbtacks because I might want to replace it later. You can use whatever you want to. Okay, and now the big test comes from putting your mirrors in here. <clears throat> now let me tell you, these are old mirrors, which is alright. <clears throat> and I don't have this adjusted for anything perfect right here. But you can see down there how that works. Now what you do is you move this. you get the image you want. Now I'm going to have to do this with my eyes instead of the camera showing you how to do this. I'm using first surface mirror here by the way too. You can use regular mirror if you want to and still get a similar, not the same effect, but similar effect, same results. And then I'm going to show you how to attach this temporarily to where you get it. Then you can drill holes and make your settings permanent, but let me just show you this. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll come down here and I'll look in there till I get the image that I want and have it pretty well perfect. These are not great mirrors. Okay, and that'd be where I, that I'd want to do it. Now, I typically would grab uh, nail. I can use a screw if I want to, just something to stop it right there. <clears throat> but one thing I do like to do is come inside or on the outside if I have an extra piece of, on the outside if I have an extra piece touching down here, and I will actually mark this point. Let me, uh, let me zoom in to show you. And I would mark you know, along here or along the board or something what that is. And then I'll take a protractor and actually measure what this angle is. This one, let me guess by looking at it. probably about 45 five degrees so I'll probably write down here 45 degrees okay and then I know that when I'm moving this thing or setting it up that all I have to do is just bring this up to here to 45 degrees to my mark see my little mark in there and to the 45 degree mark and then all I have to do is just finally adjust this to where I got the overlap that I want and it may vary depending upon you know your tape and other things, but this will help make it work. And then I will use it, but I have to position it in such a way. And I'm going to stop a moment and get a hammer and nail and show you one way to do that. So I'll get this where I want it. About that 45 and adjust it by eye until I get the right overlap. And then hold this carefully, put that right 
there and tack it in place. And I was just a little bit off, so I move it. That's great. Okay. Now, usually what I'll do is I'll drill a hole. Okay, and then I'll put a dowel rod in here and have a series of holes with dowel rods. I might even do two of them, depending upon how my jig is and everything else to make sure I hold it at exactly the correct angle. <clears throat> and if it's a little off, I'll usually want to have it a little bit to where it's out. Because then I can add tape and uh, other stuff to that, to those dowels or that dowel to bring it into exactly where I need it. Okay, I hope you understand that. But in future versions of this, which I hope to make some and show you more, you can do some fine adjustments with it. And I can show you a fine adjustment jig later if I've got time or whatever. But this I want to get you just started making a uh, kaleidoscope mirror jig. Uh, this will be able to take it into, wow, see I'm doing this with the mirror in there too by the way. Hopefully I can turn this without moving it. Don't know if you can see that or not. But there you go. You can adjust this to wherever you want and set your settings. And then you've got it. And then the other thing is, is that this is now reusable. And if you want to know what your uh, top setting is, you just take your ruler, measure across here, and that's about mm, seven eighths. Now I can put a piece right here. Then, because these gaps in here, I can actually tape it down. You could include a gap that goes all the way across, all the all the way across in three locations. So you can go ahead and tape it all down without taking it out of the jig. And so I need to zoom out here. Let me do that again. So now with this, I can go ahead and measure across here. That's about seven eighths. And I can go ahead and cut my piece and lay it on here and then go ahead and tape it you know through these gaps or you can actually put gaps in here to where you can just tape straight across if you want so there you go there's the uh, adjustable mirror jig and if you have any questions let me know but it's one of the neat things to do in kaleidoscope making one of the great secrets which now is no longer a secret enjoy Thank you.